Hello, uh, this is Sunil Sundaraj with Jersey Sporting News. Uh, I'm happy to welcome in uh, today uh, uh, Keene University softball uh, senior uh, shortstop, Gabriella Fredet. Uh, Gabriella, thank you so much uh, for taking some time out to speak with me uh, today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity. No problem, Gabriella. Hey, congratulations, I, I said. Uh, on uh, your career there at uh, Keene University. I know there's still plenty of games, you know, left in the season, but uh, you've had a, a, a terrific senior year. I mean, I think what, uh, you know, named NJAC, you know, player of the week twice, uh, you know, putting up, you know, solid stats here. Uh, can you talk about, you know, this season, especially coming off the 2020 season, you know, knowing that you guys, your season was cut short due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but to, to come back here, you guys, I think what, 17 and five, uh, seven and five in the conference. Uh, so things are rolling along, you know, pretty smoothly here, uh, Gabriella. Um, yeah, so obviously last year was tough. Um, it was my junior year and actually was my second year at the time, you know, playing here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it was definitely hard, you know, especially the seniors for last year. Um, you know, we had uh, great seniors, Tatiana and Caroline Raddy. Um, but for this year, it's definitely going into the season, you know, we wanted to play every game with, you know, the same intensity as like, you know, never know what can happen next. Because um, of like last year, what happened, um, you know, our season got cut short. So, um, you know, we try to go into the game thinking like, you know, you never know what could happen. This could be our last game. So definitely want to play with some fire in the belly and stuff like that. Uh, you know, our team is just about being a family. Um, you know, we're all sisters. Uh, and that's really what we want to do, you know, be great for our program and, you know, put our program very high, um, especially for, you know, the level that we're at and especially against the other NJAC schools as well. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just talk about what it was, uh, you know, taking that field, you know, it said, <laughs> it said that after last year, you know, and be able to, you know, it said, uh, you know, just get on that field, play the games, you know, especially in the conference. And then, Jack, I mean, that, that just must have been a surreal moment for you and the rest of the team as well as the coaching staff, uh, Gabriella. Yeah, um, when we're getting back into it now, like into the season with the NJAC competition and stuff, it's, you know, great to be back out there, um, you know, with my teammates and, you know, um, doing everything I can as a part of, you know, as a shortstop and, you know, playing with my teammates again. Um, you know, our coach is just happy about that. And, you know, she wants, you know, to keep winning and, you know, hopefully we win something down the road and, you know, win the NJAC championship and keep getting the wins that we can, you know, one, uh, one game at a time. That's type of the thing that we do as well. We take one pitch at a time, one inning at a time and keep it going and uh, play behind my pitcher. Uh, that's, that's what we want to do. You know, our thing is to win, um, play for each other, and uh, play for our coaches and our program here. Yeah, I, I you know, we're, before we came on the air, you know, talking about uh, head coach, uh, Marge, is it Margie Acker? Yes. Uh, her 500 career win yesterday, just a, mm -hmm. a, a, a huge milestone. Uh, can, can you talk about what co uh, Coach Acker has meant to you, as well as the other assistant coaches, uh, I believe Chrissy Yard, Emily uh, Sabo, and uh, uh, Dana Knapp, uh, uh, Gabriella? Um, yep, yeah, so, you know, Coach has been here for, quite some time so definitely getting that 500 win for her is definitely a milestone in her you know in her book um as a head coach for such a program like this um you know coaches you know she really relies on her you know players and stuff like that and you know we have so much respect for her across the board you know um otherwise our other three coaches are great they're always there for us um you know we have so much respect for the program whereas you know we can't take anything for less, you know, we play for each other and then we play for our coaches and our coaches are always there. I always would say like if other players ever ask, oh, how are your coaches? I would just say, you know, they're always there for us. Whatever we need, they're there. And um, they definitely make us into like, you know, um, developing like young women. Once we're done with the program, we know what we want to do outside of softball. Mm -hmm. So we're just maturing on and off the field. And we definitely carry that um, once we get off the field, like, you know, we have to represent our program. We can't be like, you know, obviously disrespectful to other programs. We just hold ourselves to accountable, like at a higher standard um, once from our coaches, because they're basically like our role models at this point. You know, um, I look up to all my coaches that I had in the years as well. So. I wanted to go back um, actually when the, 
that series against Stockton, you know, I said you, you had a tremendous series. I mean, that was so impressive. Hitting a grand slam in that series. I mean, what, what was that moment like for you? You know, I said being able to, you know, <laughs> uh, register those numbers. I mean, you know, just to be locked in, you know, I said at the plate, uh, can you talk and just your approach, can you talk about that, Gabriella? Yeah. Um, you know, when I was, the games before the Stockton game, um, was getting good contact of the ball, but wasn't really doing what I needed to do. Uh, definitely going into Stockton, just, you know, just being relaxed the whole time. Um, the first game, I think I did like three for three for doubles, mm -hmm. which was great. Um, I never thought the next game, my next at bat for the second game, I would hit a grand slam. Yeah. I never thought that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, that was definitely something for me, especially because everybody would say, oh, Gab has to hit the weight room. Gab has to hit the weight room. <laughs> Um, cause I'm mostly, I'm like a base hit hitter, just trying yeah. to get on base, you know, score people in that's yeah. really, yeah, I'm not looking to put the ball over the fence. If it happens, it happens. And that's really what, you know, came to at my bat at that time. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, went over the fence, which was great. Um, was happy, um, for me and for my teammates, you know? Yeah. I mean, at that time, I think, uh, you know, just looking at, uh, on and Jack's website that, uh, you were, um, uh, uh, leading, you know, said uh, the conference in RBIs and then uh, runs scored and uh, slugging percentage. That's what, I, you know, I wanted to ask you about it across the board is that uh, your on-base percentage, slugging percentage, I mean, that, that you know, those numbers have been consistent, you know, while you've been at, uh, at Keene University. Uh, can you just talk about that, uh, you know, you know, again, being able to put up those stats? Um, yeah, so just, you know, when I get into the box, I really just, you know, watch the pitcher out of her hand, watch the ball out of her hand. Um, if I'm not doing so well at the plate, I can put a bunt down, try to get on base. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really it. I'm not thinking too much. Um, I'm not too technical with my swing. I just know, like, all right, if I'm peeling out my front shoulder, I got to keep my head in. Mm -hmm. um, I will just, you know, I'll just know about that type of stuff, not – really crazy about all the different type of mechanic type of things. Just, you know, sit back, wait for the pitch, um, you know, and go with it. Um, I'm just, you know, happy with what's going on right now with everything about that, you know, how I'm doing um, and keep going with that with my team and keep putting up those numbers um, as well as, you know, playing with my teammates and getting those wins. I mean, and then on the flip side, uh, Gabriel, defensively, you've just been outstanding. I think, uh, uh, I don't know. It was last season. I think you, you know, you had one thousand, you know, uh, fielding percentage. I mean, can you do? I mean, just the attention to detail, playing, you know, the shortstop position. Can you uh, just, you know, comment on that as well? Yeah, I mean, every time I hear someone say, "Oh, you play shortstop," it must be like, you know, that's a lot. Yeah, it it is a lot. It's a lot <laughs> of co uh, cover, you know, to cover that much ground. Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing shortstop basically my whole entire life. Um, I don't really like the other side, uh, the right side. I just play on the left side. That's really it. Yeah. So growing up, um, shortstop was really my thing. Um, just keep playing on it. You know, I do a lot of uh, after practice. I do more reps, hitting, fielding. Um, I'm more, I like doing more up the middle. My backhands are okay. I usually mm -hmm. rely on my speed to go around the ball. Mm -hmm. But shortstop is really where, you know, that's my, that's my thing right there, you know? I mean, can you talk about this team this year? I, I think there's what a, if I, you know, if I'm correct about, I think uh, seven seniors on this team. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what this year's team, you know, uh, what's so unique about them, what they, you know, what you guys bring to the table. I, I just, I, I had to ask you about that, Gabriella. Yep. So the seven seniors, it's just me, uh, a few others, right? Taryn, Maria, Maddie, Julia, Julie, Nicole. We're all very close. Like we've been playing together now for quite some time. So it's definitely going to be hard walking away, you know, with all these seniors and, you know, got to say goodbye, which is very hard. But we're definitely like, you know, since we're the older uh, group of the team, we definitely like rely on each other to pick each other up and pick up the younger teammates. And we have to, you know, look as role models to yeah. them. Um, my coach definitely stresses that the most, you know, we have to be role, mod role models and examples to the younger uh, girls. So once they get older, they know what to do when they're in our shoes. Mm -hmm. So playing with the seniors is, you know, it's, it's bittersweet because, you know, I wish we could play forever, but you know, there's a time where we have to say goodbye. So definitely when we're playing together, you know, we have to play our hardest because that's it, you know. Yeah. 
Was there, you know, just coming into this season, like, you know, with this senior group, um, was there anything, you know, any goals, you know, something that, you know, you really wanted to, to focus in on, you know, I said, you know, finishing up uh, your career here at uh, Keene University. I just I was, uh, you know, curious about that. For myself or as the... For you personally, yeah, and uh, collectively as the team, you know, also. Um, definitely for myself, I definitely want to get, like, all in Jack, uh, mm -hmm. first conference, um, maybe player of the year if that can happen. Mm -hmm. I know COVID and stuff like that. Uh, I want to do that for myself as a team. We want to win and Jacks. Yeah. We want to do that. Uh, and that would be great for, you know, for us as a program, um, you know, cause we, every year it's like, Oh, softball is going to be great this year. Softball is going to be great this year. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do that. We have a lot of talent on this team. Um, I think one of the bigger issues right now is we have to gel more together and not be so reliant on, you know, individually, but we need to do things more together so that we can come out with more wins. Um, right now we're in like a bit of like a, we're hitting a little patch where we're like, uh, we're going on the downside where we need to, you know, get together and be like, all right, listen, we can do this. Let's just keep going and move forward and take the next games that are coming up and pull out with more wins and stuff. So we can finish the season off great. That's great. Um you know, two years ago was a magical season. I think you guys, uh, what, what was it, 39 and 8, 14 and 4 in the NJAC, and uh, went to the NCAA tournament. I mean, that was, that was a, you know, a phenomenal season. I mean, can mm -hmm. you just talk about being part of that group uh, that year, uh, Gabrielle? Yeah. So as a sophomore that year, definitely looking up to a lot of seniors um, because they went, you know, obviously they're seniors, so they're graduating. Um, that team was great. We had Raddy, Olivia Zangle, um, the other seniors too. Um, we had a lot of talent. So winning amount those like games, like especially in Florida, we won ten straight games mm -hmm. that whole time we were in Florida. And then once we got to NJAC, um, we had some tough losses. But then when we went to you know the NJAC tournament, um, obviously it once there was like a rainout type of thing in this, the championship, so they give it to the highest seed. Oh, okay. So. We were going to play on Sunday, but it got canceled. So they awarded the NJAC championship to TCNJ that year, okay. um, which, you know, obviously it was hard to, you know, see that and, you know, be like, all right, well, now we can't play. Yeah. But that team was definitely special, a lot of talent. And, you know, um, I definitely wish we could go back in time and I could play with those seniors again. Uh, that was, that was just at that point, it's just like, it's great to be a part of like great teams like that with yeah. so much talent and, you know, girls who are just so like such a family, it's like a bond, yeah. you know, and you don't see that sometimes like other girls might not be able to like be on a team like that, where you can't, you don't have a bond like that. It's like, basically like how it is here was how it was at high school. It was more like a family. And that's why, you know, you accomplished so many things because you're just so like together, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So it's just, that's how it really was. So that's where we need to be like right now to be more together as a team, as a family, and not just so reluctant on individual stuff. So I think once we get to that, we'll accomplish much more. How was that first, how was that first season? How did that pan out for you making that adjustment? I was just wondering about, you know, from high school to the mm -hmm. collegiate level for you, you know, just a, just a, yeah, I'm curious about that, uh, Gabriella. Um, definitely just different because, you know, you see different, like, talent. Yeah. Just, just so much more talent. Um, the pitching is obviously a little bit more different. Um, it could be, like, the pitching-wise as, like, okay, this pitcher is so much better than I have I ever first in high school. Because in high school, there's there's so much talent, but sometimes the pitching not might be as well as it is in college. Yeah. So um, the girls are obviously a little bit bigger, and, you know, you just have to adjust to that. So, like, as great athletes, you know, you have to adjust to things. Just like in the at-bats. Like, if you're not doing so well, you got to do, all right, so I got to make an adjustment for the next at-bat. Mm -hmm. So, I think, you know, when you come out of high school, it's kind of like, all right, it's not going to be the same. It depends on who you played in high school. But now in college, it's just all about adjustments and, you know, figuring yourself out with a new team. And I think that's like the biggest things probably for like high school athletes, they have to realize, all right, I'm not going to be playing with these, with the same people. They might've played maybe even in grade school, you know? Um, so now once they get to college, you're going with a whole new team 
and you're playing against a whole different other teams with other players that you might not even heard of and you just have to make it adjustments to that yeah uh just wanted to switch to um the support from uh the athletic department uh, uh athletic director uh you know kelly williams um you know administration I, I know it's been you know different of course you know with uh you know with students now you know coming back onto campus but just you know the overall support because it so you know, it really does take a, a village you know said a community you know said to have success you know on and off the field but can you just uh, you know speak to that uh, gabriella mm -hmm. so uh we have a he's our new athletic director yeah. for this year so he's doing a great job um he always supports us he's sometimes he's there at our uh, practice times mm -hmm. he always wants to get in, involved um, he was there yesterday taking pictures, mm -hmm. obviously, for, you know, our coaches 500 win. Yeah. So he's been there for all the athletes, um, giving support, um, different things for us because of the whole thing with the COVID. You know, some girls are might be or, you know, the, the athletes might be getting, you know, um, the mental part of it. Be like, oh, I'm affected by it or whatever it may be. So the whole athletic department is very hands on. We're taken care of all the time gear um our athletic training is top notch they're always there for us um you can even be the freshman and they'll know your name so i think that's where sometimes our school can stand out against other schools because just of like how hands-on we are and like the amount of support that we get from you know the athletic directors and the other things that are you know in our facilities and stuff like that so we just we just really are like you know very uh, cherished, mm -hmm. and um, we're very spoiled at that point. You know, so that's why like as athletes like myself and my teammates and everyone else, we just have to try to be like you know we get all this stuff. You know, we have to give back as well. You know, and show our support and do everything we can to you know put our facilities and our program to be you know very up high. As you know, it's uh, just not being an athlete, it's a student athlete. I, uh, mm -hmm. How you've been able to, you know, balance that out, you know, th those records, especially, you know, even at Division three level, you know, mm -hmm. is just as demanding, uh, Gabriella, how you've been able to, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, deal with that and, you know, just said, be able to excel. Our coach is very honest about, you know, obviously we're not there just to play softball. We're there to, you know, be a student as well and get our degree. So we have sometimes, um, you know, check ins where, all right, let's see how your grades are right now. Midterm grades um, back years ago when I was my sophomore, we used to do study halls. Now it's a little different with the COVID protocols and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, we do have like administration that will help us if we are struggling in classes. So for myself, I would I do have a planner and I make sure I'm attending all my classes, doing the homework, and we do use Blackboard. So which also is another um, useful t uh, tool, like an app that shows okay, this is what's going to be due on this date, this date. And most of my professors, um, personally for me, they're just been you know great. Um, I'm a phys ed and, and health uh, major. Okay. So all my professors are very like hands on and they're always helping and they're always, you know, cheering me on because they know I play softball as well. I still have a professor that I had two years ago. I was like, oh, I'm watching your games. Keep doing, <laughs> you know, keep up the good work and stuff like that. So I think that just shows like how well like a family, not just my teammates, but the whole, you know, Keene University is just on professors wise too. It's a great major you selected, Gabriella. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it is. Hand in hand, you know. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean to, you, um, you know, put on that Keene University, you know, uniform? What does that represent to you personally, you know, that you've been able to put it on the last, you know, say a couple of years here? It just means, you know, I have to just show out against uh, the other NJAC schools. Once we put on that jersey, it just shows like, all right, like, we have history on our backs, you know, yeah. and we have alumni that come back to our games and that just shows like, this is not just any other program. It's, you know, it means a lot. And we have coaches that have been here for many, many of years. Yeah. So it's not, I'm putting on a Jersey, I'm going to play another softball game. No, it means so much more than that. And we have so much support where it's like, 
we have to uphold that where we can't just, all right, I'm not, I don't feel like playing today. It's like, no, we have to play. You have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. You have to show out and show, you know, you know, put, put on a good show for anyone that's watching out there. Um, That's really how it is. It's just not another day. It's kind of like, you know, I'm here, I'm doing what I need to do and everybody else is supporting me as well. So just putting on the jersey just means so much to me because I've been playing the game for so long. Yeah. And um, I definitely, you know, feel like once I'm done with the game, it's just going to be so hard. But I know down the line, I'm going to always be there, but it's just not me playing. Mm-hmm. So putting on the jersey is just so much more than I'm just putting on any other article of clothing. Yeah. Uh, well said. I, you know, I, I, I didn't want to uh, skip this question is that the training for every season, you know, I mean, you, Obviously, like, you know, that training, your hard work, you know, reflects, you know, in, you know, what you've been able to, all the accolades, all the accomplishments, you know, on the field. I'm, I'm wondering, like, you know, just, you know, how that, you know, just, again, how that's worked out every year for you in the off season. you know, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, with other sports, I've asked athletes, they said, you never can take a day off. If you want to be the best of the best, you have to put mm-hmm. in the time, you know, I said weight room, you know, I said, uh, on, whether it's running, I mean, can you just talk about, you know, being able to, you know, again, you know, all those countless hours and that's not easy because you have other commitments as well, Gabriella. Yeah. I mean, it's really not just a spring sport. It's a year round sport. So it's not like, okay, maybe I'm not playing in the summer or not that much really in the fall, but I'm training all the time. So if you want to, you know, do, better. Okay. I need to do better when I'm doing my side shuffles or whatever it may be. You know, I'm not just doing that. Just, I'm not walking on the treadmill every day. I'm not doing that. I'm doing, you know, lifting, I'm doing different things, maybe on the track, Mm -hmm. um, you know, working out with other people I'm hitting. If I'm sitting down like in the summer for a whole week straight, I'm going to think like, what's going on. I'm going to be like, (laughs) what's wrong with me, you know? And I'm, I'm more like the type of person I need to do something every single day to feel better about myself and just know I'm not sitting on the couch and eating chips and stuff like that. (laughs) So it's not just also not like just training wise. It's just about taking care of yourself as well as an athlete. You know, what you do put in does reflect how you do on the field. Um, when I, I kind of got away maybe a little bit in high school because I was a little different. I did maybe eat a few pizzas before the games <laughs> and still did okay. Yeah. But now, you know, once you get older, it's a whole different yeah. you know type of thing. Your body changes. So um, I definitely eat uh, a lot better than I used to do. Um, in the morning, especially before games, I would eat like, I have to have like some eggs, like protein, egg whites, um, like fruits and um, some toast on the side and make sure I have my Gatorade and everything like that. So it's training and eating at the same time. And that's another thing too, that our strength and conditioning coach, he definitely like, you know, goes on about that. Don't, after we train, after like we have uh, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., do not go like back to eat some McDonald's or anything like that. Make sure you're getting some good nutritional food because you just worked out. You can't put in, you know, garbage now into your body. Uh, that I mean, nutrition is so essential, you know, and mm-hmm. that, again, you know, I, especially with, uh, you know, training for, for a season, for the amount of games that you guys play. Uh, I wanted to pivot to, uh, you know, your time at uh, Lodi and Macklet, you know, I said high school. Uh, can you, I mean, you guys, I mean, uh, the number of championships that you won in, it's, it's almost like a full circle moment because I, I know that you played it at Cougar softball field and, uh, you know, um, but again, you know, uh, how, you know, you guys were able to, you know, for several years, you know, we're able to be that consistent. And again, you know, be able to, to raise those trophies. What, you know, you, you know, that time, what, what did that mean, you know, for you uh, personally, Gabrielle? It was just great. I mean, I never would have like expect growing up, like when I'm playing softball yeah. and I'm entering high school and never would I thought, Oh, I'm going to be a four time state champion. I never would expect that. But after watching them play when I was, you know, going into high school and I watched them play in 2013 and when they won that, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm going to this school. Like, this is crazy. Like yeah. in a year from now, I could be in the same shoes as these girls. So once I got into high school and, you know, we won um, all my four years, 
I, it was just, it's just crazy because, you know, I mean, growing up, I've won many things with, you know, baseball, softball, different championships. So it's just like another team and I'm here to win more trophies with my team, you know, and it was just crazy, especially with like everything that goes on and all the media and everything around you. And we had actually like one of the uh, guys follow us like through um, that season. It was in 2015. Matt Mm -hmm. Small did a whole thing about us, um, which was great. So it definitely puts the high school, you know, um, stands out against other high schools in Bergen County as well. You know, playing with those girls, it was just nuts because there was a lot of talent on that team. And, you know, now all those girls are doing something with their lives. They could be still playing softball or now they're coaching or whatever it could be. So I think that's just, it's just crazy to me. Hopefully I'm not going to, you know, butcher his name and, you know, <laughs> Mr. Announce it. But if you're, you can tell about your former head coach uh, there at Lodi Immaculate. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we call him H. So okay. everybody, everybody usually calls him H. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely I met him when I was 12 years old and I played for him at Pride. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the club team that's based out of like uh, up in North Jersey. Mm-hmm. So I met him when I was 12 and I played in the fall for him and he always wanted me to, you know, he's like, Oh, come, come to IC, come to IC and stuff like that. You know, he's definitely a character. Um, He does have a lot of championships though, but it's just, you know, great guy, well-rounded. He definitely knows how to get the girls to come to his school. Um, But now he's obviously at a different school, but when he was at IC, he knew who exactly who he wanted and he'll definitely get them to come in. Um, just based on all the stuff that he, you know, has accomplished as a coach, you know, all the players that he did get, it was me and other great players that he did um, recruit as well. There were some incredible teams, you know, in talent, you know, especially in Bergen County. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, Lodi and Mackley, you have IHA, you have Holy Angel. I mean, there are a bunch of schools. I mean, to, you know, again, go up against those schools. And then even when you, you know, you faced other schools, you know, from there, you, had, you know, as you, you know, um, uh, you know, advanced, you know, can you talk about that? Because, you know, knowing that you were up against that, you know, top talent every year, but uh, I'm, I'm just wondering what those games were like. I mean, they, they must've been very intense, you know, as far as oh, going yeah. up against those schools. Um, when we were playing in the counties, it was just like, you know, all different schools are coming. We're playing yeah. against Ramsey. We're playing against Northern Highlands. Yeah. Um, there's a chance where we could play against IHA and we, we did play them my last year, my senior year, it was my final game. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's intense games. A lot yeah. of people come out to those games and, yeah. you know, that's where I feel like some people that are coming up into high school have to realize like, listen, there's a target on your back, yeah. you know, those standings that come out and that say, Oh, your number, whatever it, in the mm-hmm. state. So when I was in high school, we were, I think we were number maybe three in the state or, whatever it was, but there's a target on your back and, you know, you have to uphold that and, you know, just play for the school and play for each other and just know like who you are. I think that's where, when I was in high school, that's where the thing was. It's like, we know who we are and we'll just show our talent and yeah. prove to people, you know, we're just not this little IC school. Cause I think people sometimes forget, Oh, IC is just, you know, it's just a little small Catholic all girls school. Yeah. But when, you know, there was a lot of people that come out to our games and watch us play, you know, other big schools like that. That's great. Just have a couple more. I, I can't thank you for the time, Gabrielle. Uh, I was reading in the notes that you, uh, when you're going playing, you know, uh, basketball and tennis, I'm wondering where softball fit in, like when you knew it was your passion and um, you were, you know, you wanted to pursue that. But And also what makes the game of uh, softball so special, you know, to you? Uh, growing up, definitely my dad was a big impact on me. He told me when I was younger, he would always throw the ball at the wall and somehow I like stuck my hands up and he's like, yep, that's it. That's, that's it. We're going to get you going. So I grew up playing baseball and he was actually my coach. I played baseball until I was 11 years old. And then okay. I transitioned over into softball. But when I was younger, I did play basketball and tennis too. Um, I still do tennis, actually. I do some, okay. I do lessons. I give lessons, actually, on tennis. Okay. Um, I did play some tennis in high school. I did that. And then um, I just knew when I got into high school, around like 12, 
when I did get into high school, I just knew softball is my game. Yeah. My dad kind of not him and I kind of talked about when I was younger, about 12 years old. It's like, listen, you're not going to play basketball and tennis, how you are going to play in softball, just based on, you could just see the recruitment and stuff like that. He was really thinking about the path down the line more as of like, all right, I'm 12 years old. You're like, you're crazy. Why are you thinking about like recruiting right now? <laughs> like, I'm not even in high school yet. But like, as you can see, like each sport is just different at its own. It's not just, oh, all right, I could pick up basketball and I'm going to keep playing the rest of my life. It's like, you got to settle down with one sport. I mean, there's athletes that are doing two sports in college and yeah. God bless them. But I just knew um, growing up, like, this is my main sport and definitely I'm going to excel in that and keep going with it and pursue it and, and get to, you know, a college uh, level with it. And even That's after, you know, I'm still, I still want to coach and everything like that. I'm never going to go away from the game obviously, but I can't play, but I'm just never going to go away from it. You know, that's a great segue and transition to uh, one of my questions, you know, that did pop into my head before, you know, I started the interview was women in sports. And I think it's really mm -hmm. an important topic. Can you talk about that? Uh, just the growth, you know, and just, it seems like the popularity, and especially I've seen it, uh, I think, you know, you know, with women's softball, especially, you know, college women's softball. Can you talk about that, uh, Gabrielle? Yeah, I think right now it's just, it's getting so much popular than it was before uh, with all like the women's softball. It's so great to watch. My dad, even a big Yankee fan, he said, I like watching soft, softball much more than baseball yeah. just because of the game is so much faster. Yeah. Um, but women's sports in general, it's just definitely an impact on, you know, um, girls my age and very young, like the younger generation. I think it's just not, you know, oh, you're just a girl or anything like that. Um, definitely when I was younger, I did get one one of those. Oh, she's a girl. She's a girl. When I was playing baseball, yeah. she's a girl. She's pitching like, oh, blah, blah, blah. like what? like all this stuff. I think girls need to realize like it's just it's not just this sport. It's like it could be your lifestyle. And I think we're athletes need to realize like if you have your heart and soul into the game, then you're going to go somewhere with it. So I think for girls like younger than me and girls that are like way younger if they want to do something do it pursue it and keep going and work hard at it because you know you never know where it could take you you yeah. softball brought me so many friends so many different brought me to so many different places I probably never would have went Georgia Virginia Florida like all these different places and meeting all these different like great athletes across the board so it's just not, oh, it's just a game. It's much more than that. And so if girls want to pursue it, do it and keep going at it. Yeah, no, excellent point. You, you know, just not about sports, but, you know, talking about social issues and, you know, yeah, you know, everyday life that, you know, affects you. No, uh, that's wonderful. You know, the, the final two, I know you mentioned your dad. You're from Hackensack, uh, New mm -hmm. Jersey. I, I wanted to ask you what the reaction has been. Of course, uh, in the town and then uh, at Lodi Immaculate, you know, I said knowing what, you know, you've been able to, again, accomplish, you know, here, uh, you know, four years at uh, Keene University. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely they're all uh, happy for me and they just knew that, like, you know, Gab has a good head on her shoulders and she's going to do whatever she can to, you know, keep pursuing to be a great athlete and a great individual um I think that's one of the things you know growing up as an athlete it's like you know you're just not a regular person now like people are watching you every little thing that you do can reflect yeah. in your future so definitely you know when I get out of college I want people to know me as you know she's a great athlete great hard worker and then when I do coach they know all about me and what I'm all about and I think that's what's going to happen in the future. And then hopefully I can be just like my coach right now, maybe get 500 wins down the line <laughs> and stuff like that. That's definitely a big goal, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, final question, you might've uh, answered it is that um, what your advice is for, for younger kids and athletes. I mean, it's, it's much more challenging. You probably can attest to it. I mean, there's so much with the spotlight, social media, I mean, you name it. it it's like, you're under a microscope, you know, yeah. probably 24, seven, 365. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then just adding a layer to that is that, you know, now being a senior, being able to pass down that knowledge, that experience to the younger, you know, the, the freshmen and sophomores, because you were there at, uh, at yep. one point, as you said, learning from the seniors. So I'm just, I, I'm just wondering what, you know, again, your um, advice would be to them. 
just be tunnel vision, really don't, you know, get your head out of, you know, that mind space, you know, just, hey, you got to, you came here for a reason, you want to keep playing softball, and keep doing it. Don't worry about anything else, the outside factors. Um, I usually think like softball is my getaway from stress, like maybe homework, whatever else, you know, I love softball, and I'm going to keep doing what I need to do, keep working hard. Just because we had an hour or two hours a day of practice, maybe do something more after, you know, you got to, you can't be perfect, but we want to practice perfection. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I've heard a lot. Um, keep a, don't worry about the social media, about the little things like that, because that stuff is where like, I feel like most athletes get caught up in like, Oh, like, this is what's put out blah, blah, blah about me or whatever it may be. Don't get caught up in that, you know, keep a tunnel vision, keep locked in and good things will happen once you have that type of mindset. And I think girls sometimes, or are just caught up in like what everybody else is saying about them, you know, and you gotta have to have that mental where you can't let that get to you and just keep going and going and going and something will turn out to be good for you. You just got to put in the hard work and everything else will just come along the way with it. Terrific. Okay, Gabrielle, the floor is yours. If there's anything uh, you want to add, if I if I missed out on something, uh, you're more than welcome to add to it. <laughs> um, I just want to say uh, thank you to my dad for always inspiring me and you know telling me to keep working hard. Um, I also want to say to my younger sister, she's going to be in high school soon. Um, she's in eighth grade, so in the fall she'll be going to a high school. We don't know right now as of what high school yet, but whatever high school she lands in or decides to go, um, I want you to work hard and keep doing your thing. I'm always here for you. You can always look up to me and I got your back no matter what. Also for the younger kids, keep working hard and don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything. You're always going to do something if you put your mind to it. And that's really it. That's all, all right. I got. Hey, uh, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. You know, again, you. it's been just an absolute honor and privilege, you know, interviewing you and, um, you know, congrats on your success. And then, you know, with you know, graduation, of course, upcoming and uh, all the best, you know, I said uh, in your future endeavors as well, uh, Gabriella. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you.